Hey, it's Sick Boy from the Gaming Anarchist Collective, and welcome to the Anarchic Eye for November the 21st, 2013. Well, Phil Spencer has come out in order to say that there will not be a drought of Xbox One games post-launch window. Now, I'd just like to offer some advice to Phil here. Don't do that. Don't come out and say, Oh, are you worried there's going to be no games? Don't worry. There's. Well, I've been speaking to developers. I've gone here and I've spoken to this developer. I've been to Lionhead. And I've been over here and I've been over here. And oh, there, there is no worry. There will be plenty of games on the Xbox One. Do you know what that sounds like? That sounds like you are trying to quell a panic that doesn't exist. Okay? This is how rumours start. Okay? I'm just going to say it now. That is going to start a rumour that there are not enough Xbox One games. Because that's what happened with the Wii U. And if it's, you don't address it like that. You've come out and you've said it. It's out there now. It's floating around. I've seen many people talking about the Xbox One drought. The console doesn't even come out for the next couple of hours in the UK and yet people are already talking about it. This is why Microsoft need to fix their PR because they seem to get their messaging so badly wrong. What are you doing? Well, with the launch of the Xbox One fast approaching by practically minutes by the time this video goes out, Rumours have already started to surface that Xbox One units will have had hardware fails. There are some examples floating around, there are some, again, some evidence videos. This is exactly the same as what happened with the PlayStation 4. This is why the whole console war thing is bullshit. You pick the console you want based on the business that you're dealing with. In this instance, I picked between the two that I prefer. I have made no bones over the fact that the way they have handled themselves, I prefer Sony's product over Microsoft purely for the way they've been over the last six months. That has no relevance when it comes to me wanting other people to fail. Just as a little funny point here, funny enough look at me, not dancing in the street at, at evidence that Microsoft consoles are tanking and it seems that they are tanking in their small numbers and basically a similar rate as far as we can tell right now to the PlayStation 4. We'll see what happens. Hopefully they're both just very small failure rates. I would hope so for the sake of the people that spent their hard-earned money on them. I have no love for the reputation of either of the companies if they look stupid for having poor hardware, but what I do care about people who have saved up their money and they have spent on a machine that they believe is going to entertain them and it turns into a brick. That's bullshit for them. So, bear that in mind. I expect an awful lot of rumours going around. Basically, it's going to be like last week all over again. Welcome to the console wars, where stupidity overrules rationality. Well, much like Gran Turismo 6 and Forza 5, start as they mean to go on, Rise, Son of Rome's microtransactions details have come out. Now, it appears that you can buy 1,000 gold pieces for 79 pence or 99 cents. And 1,000 gold coins is the equivalent of, according to what people who've actually played the game have said, about 5 hours of gameplay. Okay? And the, the loot that you get for the multiplayer is all random based on you buying gift packs with the money and then you get random loot. If you get the highest one, which I believe is 6,000 gold pieces, you get three pieces of random loot. So you could play the multiplayer game for 30 hours in the lobby or you can pay the six pounds and possibly get something worthless. This is uh, pretty much the sign of things to come. This is what people have been expecting. This is the, ri the true rise of the microtransactions. Launch titles are only going to be a microcosm of where we go from here. So I strongly recommend not supporting these things, not putting money into the system. If you want to buy the game, buy the game. But do not support these microtransaction systems because really, the idea of in what is essentially just a horde mode, you are going to pay money for different hats and shit. This isn't Team Fortress 2. That is at least a free-to-play game. You're paying full price for Rise Son of Rome, so you should not be paying to shortcut to unlock small, unlockable clothing items that have very little effect on your stats, according to the reviews I've seen. So, be aware... That's not just Rise, that's not just Forza, that's Gran Turismo as well, and I'm sure there'll be plenty more, 
and it's only going to get worse unless we do something about it. Well, as I mentioned a short while ago, when the launch titles were listed and how much space they took up on the hard drive, now the prices on Xbox Live have been announced for the launch titles. A lot of people have been up in arms about the prices. And I have to say, I don't know where that's come from. I'm not sure whether you've looked at the digital prices on the current generation of consoles. The PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, the prices are exorbitant. In some cases, the prices of games are about exactly the same. In some cases, slightly cheap, but about the same. You're paying about £50 for a digital game. And I this was about $80. And with EA games, they haven't really listed any new... Uh, with the EA games on the PS3, certainly. I know, it's $59.99 for FIFA. Uh, that equivalent to being about $90 for FIFA. So, I'm not sure where the uproar of the price point has come about, other than the fact that they're perhaps pushing more to digital this generation, which I strongly recommend you do not embrace. Um... Because of all the reasons I've been mentioning over the various months I've been doing this. But you need to bear in mind that the prices have not actually changed very much, and I just stammered like a motherfucker. But I'm going to continue because, fuck it, I am a one take individual. So they are going to continue to stay at this kind of price, and the price of the discs have gone up, so that may try and push some people towards digital. I would implore you stick with physical as long as you physically can, if only for your own good because you get no benefit from purely digital as yet. If they're going to push a purely digital experience, they're going to need to offer you better pricing. So hold out for it. If you don't buy the titles, they will not sell them at that price. Supply and demand, we have the demand. They have the supply. They don't have us over a barrel, we have them over a barrel. They are desperate to sell to us, they need to make us happy. So be difficult to please, and do not just give them what they want in fear of they'll take your games away, because if they take your games away, they go out of business. They're not so stupid that they're going to isolate all their customers. They are going to give you what you want. Because we, as a collective, are far stronger than they could ever be. This is just a quick notification to any fans of the Wing Commander series. GOG currently has a 50% off sale on the Wing Commander series. I believe it's for $23.99. And they have... All these ports are going to be available to be played on modern machines. So if you miss the beauty of those old Wing Commander games, they are now available and right now they're on sale. Now you can also select individual titles and they're only a few dollars a piece. So if you're a fan of that series, you have the cash, and you feel like getting back into them now might be a fantastic time. Well, this story is somewhat of a cautionary tale for how you should deal with gaming journalism. Now, the article that I link in the description, the one I'm going to talk about now, is about a rumour that Ninja Theory are going to cease making AAA games, and they're going to focus on mobile games. This has been floating around, people have been talking about it all day. Now, Ninja Theory themselves came out and tweeted that no, they are working on console games, they don't know where that rumour came from, and it's not founded in any truth. And the article, as you'll see there, has been rewritten to say that they deny that rumour. They've even kept the head they've even changed the headline, and obviously they've they've clearly updated it, put the original story, but this is what you need to be aware of. This is why you need to look at your source material, because this rumour is going to continue until people actually state, no, Ninja Theory are not stopping AAA production. They're not. By their own admission, they're not. And you'll see in the description the tweet where they've flat out denied the rumour. So this is what happens. This is why I made the video I made the other day. Don't just trust what you see and what someone tells you. Look at the source information. In this case, often the source article will get updated, as happened here. But you need to bear in mind that these articles are cut and paste all over the web. So you need to be careful to be sure that what you're being told and what you're hearing reflects the current situation. Well, just as a reminder to how the world actually tends to see us, gamers, the South Korean government, in fact a representative for the current in power South Korean government, stated that in Korea there are 3.33 million people suffering from the worst addictions in society. Now, in order of worst to best, as in most prevalent to least prevalent, he stated alcoholism, internet video gaming, gambling and drug addiction. 
Those things are what are destroying 3.33 million Koreans' lives. Now, when it comes down to it, literally, it's 0.09 million people are drug addicts. And about 2.1, I think it's 2.14 million are alcoholics. And the remainder is made up by a fraction of which who are gambling addicts, and the rest are considered gamers. That online gamers are considered addicts now. That is the sort of terminology that people use. Because they don't see us as people, they see us as weird, deranged people, because we have a hobby that they don't understand. They think it's weird to sit in front of a, t in front of a screen for hours on end, which is bizarre. Have you seen how much TV people watch? I personally don't watch TV. I often watch stuff, I do watch stuff on Catch Up, I watch stuff on Netflix. I also watch YouTube videos and I play games. In amongst those things, I watch very few programs that are actually presented on television. Certainly not live. The only thing I'm probably going to watch live for the rest of this year is probably going to be the Doctor Who special. So, it's a bizarre thing that they can use us like targets. They can lumber in gamers with drug dealers and alcoholics and gambling addicts as these terribly desperate addicts who are in need of help. No. No. There is a big difference. Now, there may be. Now, they may just be referring to those who have a high, high, high level of compulsion when it comes to video games. But compulsion does not equal addiction. Trust me, CNS Pharmacology training talking here. What it takes to make an addiction is actually an effect in the brain, an actual change in the neurotransmitters in the brain, that your receptors change in your brain. There is a difference between that and conditioning, and being conditioned and, being, and wanting to do something. Now, um, for example, obsessive compulsive disorder. It's not an addiction, it is a severe compulsion. Now, it may make you horrifically, you may horrifically struggle with it, but it is not something that your, your brain does not actually need it, it's you cannot handle... It's a very different thing. It, it basically comes out of the fact that your, bio, your biochemical makeup in your brain will change in an addiction. It will not in a compulsion. It is a habit. It is a strong habit, but it's a habit that you can choose to end. You're not vomiting and shaking because you haven't played a game. It's fucking idiocy to refer to it as... Same, same as gambling, to be honest. Gambling addiction is not... It's gambling compulsion. You get into a self-destructive spiral, is it a psychological issue? Yes it is. Is being addicted to games to the level of, is you only play games all day, every day, and you don't go out, is that a problem? Fucking yes it is. Of course that's a problem. But that's a social problem. It's not an addiction. Do you do anything too much? Do you sit on the toilet for ten hours a day? You, sir, have a toilet addiction. Do you eat a lot? You have an eating addiction. No, you fucking don't. You just eat too goddamn much. But this is where we are. We are a scapegoat. We are the villains, or we're the victims, depending on how they want to paint us. In this instance, we're the terrible downtrodden victims. In others, we're the maniac crazy loners who shoot up schools. Despite the fact that almost every single person could come under the category of gamer, if you've ever played Candy Crush or Farmville, technically speaking, you have gamed. Don't bullshit. There's a difference between being a hardcore game enthusiast and being a gamer. Everyone plays fucking games. Everybody does. Then people who don't haven't got access or knowledge of the technology. Given the opportunity, anyone would play a game. That is why... Crosswords are still popular. That is why puzzles and shit are still a big thing. Because people like activities that keep your brain and motor function going. And that's what video gaming is. An enjoyable hobby. And these freaks, because they're the freaks, trust you. Trust me, they are the freaks, not us. These are the people who want to paint us as weird for having a hobby that they don't share. Be very sure whenever you see that to be highly vocal. Not aggressive, not angry, not unreasonable, but you say very clearly, I am a perfectly normal, healthy member of society and I enjoy playing video games and there is nothing wrong with that. There are cases where gamers lose their jobs. There are cases where people get looked upon as weird because we play games. Frankly, that's fucking ridiculous. You wouldn't do that to someone who read books. Well, some people do, but those people are normally thick. You wouldn't do that. You like watching movies. Ugh. 
You're one of those filmers. Oh, oh God, I bet you live in your mother's basement and just wank into socks and eat Pringles. Be a positive representation and stop these assholes from using us for political leverage. I'd like to end this on something of a positive note and positive for two reasons. One for the news, two for the fact that this actually came from someone within our little community here, which is absolutely lovely. Now, Bulldozer X, who has been following me for quite some time, has been a highly vocal member of the community, speaks to me, tweets me all the time. Now, has come across speaking to Maxis directly on Twitter, asking about... Are you going to make an offline version of SimCity? The game that should have been offline from day one because it's an offline game. What have they come out with? They actually replied, and I've got the copy of the tweet right here, that they are working on it. It's coming. They will be making an offline version of SimCity. Now, if only they can make one without fucking Origins, that would be a marvellous thing. But it is really good to see. This is why it's good to work together here. This is why the kind of community spirit is a very good thing. This is why the whole idea of collectivism is a good thing. Ask questions. Poke about. See what happens. Occasionally, these lovely little nuggets of truth will come your way and we can share it amongst ourselves and be more knowledgeable for it. So there we go. Anyway, guys... You've been looking through the 2020 vision of the Anarchic Eye. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you guys later.